Welcome back to Live at 11. An American scientist claims he's found the lost city of Atlantis. Sonar scanning of the seabed between Cyprus and Syria shows what Robert Sarmist claims are the remains of the legendary lost city. Sarmist says a recent expedition has confirmed the data. He claims the location of the Atlantis Acropolis matches descriptions by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. Just south of the country of Cyprus and west of Lebanon, is the location where an amateur archaeologist studying satellite pictures of the Mediterranean noticed what looks like a giant scarab beetle formed out of the rock of the seafloor. Spanning an incredible 60 miles long and 40 miles wide, this geological anomaly is literally at the center of a mystery that not only threatens to completely rewrite the ancient history of Cyprus, but also that of ancient Egypt and Syria. In addition to revealing a Masonic connection that not only involves the location of the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis, but also the existence of giants. Inspired by the writings of the Greek philosopher Plato, the location of the Kingdom of Atlantis was the 20th and now the 21st century's biggest nautical mystery. Most recently, both social and mainstream media focused its attention on the far end of the Arab world at the Northwest African nation of Mauritania for its answers due to an initial discussion sparked by us here on the mysterious Middle East and then made famous by the Bright Insight channel. There, the geological anomaly known as the Rikat structure was only discovered by astronauts orbiting Earth in the 1960s. Today, it is now considered the number one candidate for the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis. However, unknown to most people, another anomaly exists at the other end of the Mediterranean Sea, in the heart of the Levant, that could actually be this fabled kingdom. It is in fact, one of three geological anomalies in roughly the same area, encapsulating the countries of Syria and Cyprus, essentially presenting us with three options for where the precise location of Atlantis could be. With our first location being the Gulan Heights, Ryan Peterson, a biblical researcher and writer who is an expert in Hebrew and theology, argues that there is a connection between what Plato wrote in his works, the Timaeus, about Atlantis and the stories of biblical giants known as the Nephilim. According to the early books of the Old Testament in the Bible, these creatures were the offspring of demons and human women before the Great Flood, and thus were essentially the biblical equivalent of the Titans, the giants from the Greek mythology. Speaking to Coast to Coast FM, Mr. Peterson explains that the stories of the Nephilim are nearly identical to the tales of the Greek god Poseidon who is said to have fathered children to a human woman in Atlantis. Writing in his book, Judgment of the Nephilim, Peterson explains that Plato's description of Atlantis matches biblical descriptions of a mysterious stone structure in Israel called the Circle of Giants, also known as Rujm al -Hiri. Plato states that Atlantis was built outwards in concentric circles with water running through it. Similarly, the Rujm al -Hiri features five concentric circles of stones built using 40,000 tons of rock. It's five concentric circles with a diameter of 159 meters. 39,000 tons of rocks went into this Gilgal Raphaim, the circle of the giants. Now, 5,000 years ago, the only people on the Golan Heights were nomads. These nomads were not megalith builders. As discussed in an earlier episode, the idea that giants existed in the Levant and right across the Middle East and even into North Africa is far from a new concept. For example, we have the Anakim, a race of giants from Hebron, which according to the Bible inhabited the region later known as Edom and Moab in the days of Abraham. Then there are the people of Ad, whose scholars say likely originated from either Oman or Yemen. According to the Quran and Hadiths, these superhuman Arabian giants were a physically and intellectually powerful tribe 
They use their tremendous size and technological knowledge to build a vast city and conquer a large part of Arabia and part of Iraq and Egypt. They may have even been responsible for building the pyramids. However, while giants exist in the Levant and across the wider Middle East is an accepted historical fact, at least amongst the religious, be they Christian, Muslim, and even the rare few who still believe in Greek mythology, the idea that this particular area of the Gulan Heights is being a remnant of the city of Atlantis is an entirely different issue. While Plato clearly states that Atlantis had a nautical quality to it that dominates this description, the area in around the site in the Gulan Heights is a whole kilometer above sea level and has no connection with the sea now, nor is there any geological or historical evidence that it did so in the past. This leads us to our second location, a mere several hundred miles from the Gulan Heights, the island of Cyprus. It's a perfect match, it's exactly one, one and a half miles from the external wall to the center of the summit. We have a wall at the edge, we have a canal with, that is also concave, and then we have the outer wall. So cool. And this summit, this hill, was supposedly seven miles from the sea to the south. Mm -hmm. and that's also an exact match. And it was supposed to be in the middle of a rectangular plain, which was flat and smooth. Robert Bezat Sarmast, an acclaimed Iranian-American amateur archaeologist, argues in his book, The Discovery of Atlantis, that Atlantis is not only located near to Cyprus, but is actually Cyprus itself. This image shows how the island is part of a larger landmass that Sarmas claims was this lost kingdom, most of which is now submerged under the sea. Using sonar technology and 3D modeling of the Mediterranean, he developed a compelling hypothesis that asserts that Atlantis originally stretched from Cyprus to Syria. 70 miles east of the island's coast, Sarmas led a 2004 expedition to the area that found evidence of man-made structures including two walls over three kilometers long underneath the sea. In a report obtained by the mysterious Middle East that is no longer available online for reasons that will become apparent later, his findings included a detailed description of what seems to be the remains of a vast underwater city of unprecedented scale. The report states that a detailed sonar scan of the area revealed the existence of megalithic stone structures, walls and canals, which unfortunately were degraded by time and sea. In other words, we believe that we found the Acropolis Hill, and it is a perfect match with Plato's description. There's a However, Sarmas's archaeological victory would be short-lived. After a quick rise to fame during the mid-2000s, as a result of his research, others have been quick to dismiss him, most significantly the Cypriot authorities. According to a CNN report, the chief government archaeologist of Cyprus Dr. Pavlo Florenzos reacted with skepticism to Sarmas's allegations, telling the Associated Press that more proof is necessary. This opinion is shared by a number of other scientists and researchers, both skeptics and believers in the existence of Atlantis. Since then, not much progress has been publicly made on Sarmas's research, with all of the information he had gathered on his websites and potential blogs being shut down and removed. However, even though 15 years later, Sarmas's academic credibility continues to sink beneath the waves of the Mediterranean, could there still be some truth to the idea that Cyprus is actually Atlantis that he himself may have missed? This leads us to location 3, and where things get very weird. At approximately 33 degrees north and 33 degrees east is an underwater geological anomaly that comes in the shape of a giant scarab beetle, at least according to the researcher Nicholas Fenning. In this video, where you can see north of Egypt, south of Cyprus and west of Israel, pointing in a northeasterly direction, is the scarab-shaped anomaly. At 60 miles long and 40 miles wide, Fenning notes that the shape is exactly aligned diagonally to the Egyptian pyramids. However, how does Fenning equate to this shape to Atlantis? Well, he believes that this scarab-shaped anomaly is Atlantis itself, designed and built by the ancient Egyptians. His reasoning stretches back to Freemasonry in ancient Egypt mysticism, with his grandfather being a member of a prominent lodge. Within Freemasonry, the 33rd degree is the highest order within this organization. Therefore, out of curiosity, he decides to enter the figure into Google Maps to see what he would find. 
Fenning implies that the city was built by the ancient Egyptians in the age of Cancer, a star sign that in Egyptian astrology is represented as a scarab beetle, a fact that Plato himself references in his book Timaeus, the same book that speaks of Atlantis. This would make the underwater structure approximately 8 to 10,000 years old. Fenning goes on to say that through history, until the present day, the elite knew how the position of the Atlantis, from Plato to Leonardo da Vinci, to other prominent figures throughout time, all of whom have left clues in paintings and various other works of art and architecture. Unfortunately, as fascinating the research of Nicholas Fenning is, it has yet to be critically tested and verified both scientifically and historically, and till this day remains largely unknown. Ultimately, we have three separate locations within miles of each claiming to be the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis. Peterson stating it is in the Gulan Heights, Sarmas saying it is Cyprus itself, and Fenning saying it is just south of Cyprus. Alone, each of these theories is more or less scientifically flawed, or lack academic support. However, can it be a coincidence that each of these locations is within miles of each other? What if Atlantis encapsulated the entire Levant region? and each of these three places are each pieces of the same puzzle. So what do you think? Do you believe in the existence of Atlantis? And if so, do you believe it could have been in the heart of the Middle East? Or is it in Northwest Africa? To see our original post on the Kingdom of Atlantis set in Mauritania, you can now find it in our second channel, The Mysterious Middle Eastern Bot. In the meantime, leave your opinion down below. And if you have not already, like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel's growth and Patreon. Thanks for watching.